Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Pulling Ads from Four Guys in a Comic. I'm your host, Rusty Surfer, and I am with, once again, the Red Skull. How's it going, everyone? Yeah. So, we're back for episode three of Pulling Ads on our YouTube channel. And um, today we have gone back once again to our personal comic collections and pulled out two comics each and found some advertisements that may be a little nostalgic or uh, maybe just out there. I mean, we did have a, what was it, 160? We're, I'm never going to get over a $165 airplane. No, no. You can't no. get over that. Or the last, no. last time a guy answers the phone from an advertisement from 30 years ago. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, our last. Yeah, you got to go back and check out the old ones too. Yes. Uh, give them a like, um, and if you want notifications, ring the bell thing and get subscribed to us. All right, on Four Guys in a Comic. So going into today's issues, um, red. I mean, I went first last time, so I'm guessing that this time it's your turn. Yeah, I can do that. It's not a problem. Um, of course, another our, our army at war. This is issue number 137 from 1963. 1963. Take yes. it way back. Way back. Get yeah. the way back machine and pull out an ad, as you can see to the side, for check out your Superboy IQ. Ooh. Yeah, so basically, it's you know, you have the little DC uh, guy right there um, with a word, uh, word bubble, and you have to try to figure out what the clues are, you know. Do you know what will happen next time Superman is exposed to... Now, this is where I get confused. Meteor and Meteor, or Kryptonite and Meteor. Why will Superman project Martha and... Uh, uh, Spit uh, it Jonathan. out, Red Skull. Jonathan, God. See, that's how, that's how much Superman I read, all right? All right. Into the, I guess, the Phantom Zone. How will okay. uh, Lex get revenge on the... And that's where I'm confused. I'm thinking Aliens? What will happen when a uh, crypto and super chimp become pets of Lois? I didn't know there was a super chimp. I didn't know either, but I'm looking at the picture here. And there's a there's a chimpanzee or monkey, whatever, in a Superman costume. That's what I was like, kind of scratching my head. Like I don't remember chimpanzee. We have Hydra that? monkeys, and then we have yeah. super chimps. Yeah, what's going What's on the with world that? coming to? But it's kind of nice. You can get a two year subscription. Uh, what is it? Uh, how, how, doesn't even say. Does it? Oh yeah, sixteen. I'm sorry, sixteen issues for a dollar sixty. Wait, a dollar sixty? Sixteen? Sixteen. It's issues no one wants though. Well, figure this is. Well, everybody wants them now because this is go back in 1963. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But if you're Canadian, you got to pay an extra twenty cents. So. Sorry, sorry Nova. Nova. <laughs> <laughs> but yep, get Superboy 1964 for a dollar sixty for a two year offer. So so wait, it had all the IQ questions and everything, right? Yeah. Yeah? Do you know any of them? Does it say? It does, there's no uh, answer key on, in it at all. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Like I, said, I think well, it maybe got like 95%. It was that monkey that throws me off. I don't know the name of the, of the chimp. You know the name of the monkey? Let us know. Yeah, throw a comment down below and tell us. Who is this crazy monkey in a Superman costume? Uh. Or just message it. One or the other. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. Just let us know. I'm kind of curious. Well, I'm kind of curious myself. What I'm curious also about is what you got for us. Okay. So my first comic that I've got, you know I'm a big cosmic fan. So I pulled out The Power of Warlock number five. Nice. nice. Yeah, from April of 1973. So ten years later <laughs> from 1963, we got Adam Warlock here. And it's by Ron Goulart. Hmm. I know some of you are hating me for that. But then there's Gil Kane, too. Gil yeah. Kane on art. Great stuff. Yeah. Fantastic. And so the first thing that I saw that kind of just, like, jumped out at me in this issue was an ad for the shop by mail once again. Because, you know, the early 70s are notorious for putting weird things in yes. the shop for mail. Um, yeah. Scary, life-size monster ghost. But, get this, it obeys your commands. What? Okay. A life-size ghost that obeys your commands. Okay. Over seven feet tall. Dude, that is cool. Yeah, right? 1973, though? I don't know how much faith I have in this, okay? Yeah. Um, picture looks kind of weird, but it's only a dollar. A, a dollar. dollar? A dollar for this. Here, I know we're going to put it up in the corner, but for now, I don't. Yeah. 
I don't get it. I don't. A dollar. And what it rises, jumps, darts, floats in air. Okay. And this, it, the eyes glow in the dark. But this is the thing that really, really kind of, I don't get what they mean by obeys your commands because this chiller, thriller, acts as though alive. Make him obey your commands even when you are as far as 100 feet away. That's pretty far. I mean, I'm just sitting here. I'm like, wait, what? And it's make him dance to music to a real terror, giant-sized, horrible, and sinister of durable polyurethane. Polyethane. Eth- I don't. I don't even know how to say that. Okay, and amaze your friends, and you get peeping skeleton hands with free with the order. So for they're a like dollar? little for a dollar. That's a good, cool deal. Yeah, I pay a dollar. Yeah, for that. add twenty-five cent for postage and handling. Okay, so from Miami five. Beach. Yeah. How do you make it move? Is there yeah. like a motor in it or something? That is my main thing. <laughs> well, like probably it ends up being is it's probably like helium balloons underneath something with strings attached. And you got to... and the hundred. It's like a kite. <laughs> that Ooh, might that be it. Be it it might be a kite. It could it's... be. Okay. That's tr- a seven foot tall monster ghost kite. Yeah. And that that would make a lot more sense. It would. It really would. And poor kid gets this in the mail. It's like, it's a kite. It's a kite. <laughs> a kite for a dollar, with f- mon- with skeleton hands. Yeah, and glow in the dark eyes. So you fly this kite at night, and you scare people as if a monster is flying through the air. Yeah, I, I bite off that. I could see it being a kite now. Okay. That's still, eh, I mean, that could still be kind of cool. Yeah. That'd be kind. I mean, I, for 1973. Yeah. Be flying it in like a graveyard at night. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be fun. That would be a good, like, just tie it to, like, a gravestone and, like, bring your friends into it or whatever and not tell them. Like, oh, oh my God, God! Look at that. <laughs> Come here. I'll comfort you, honey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. All right. So, what is your second comic? Well, keeping the tradition of the 1970s, I have Sergeant Fear and his Howling Commandos, issue number 121 from 1974. Cool. And in here, I just, as you can see from this pic, you just... Yeah, it's, it's begging to be talked about. Hypnotize with any TV set on the first evening or your money back. All right. Okay. Television repairman's accidental discovery makes anyone a hypnotist right away. Secret method uses ordinary TV set. No electronic no knowledge needed. No prior hypnotic training needed. Send no money. Just name and address. Pay postman two ninety eight. Plus ca- for cash on delivery, or send three dollars with order, and we pay postage out of Florida. <laughs> Florida, just Florida again. So, uh, and then as you can see in this picture, you know you got this pretty young girl in her nighty hypnotized. Uh, to me, this is kind of sending the, the wrong message here. It's like, hey, baby, let's watch some TV tonight. Come on. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. That's horrible. <laughs> Hypnotize like, hey, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, yeah, go they... make me a sandwich. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, that's what it was. Horrible. Go make a sandwich. <laughs> but I mean, it's sending the wrong message to kids that read comics, in yeah. my opinion. That's a weird one, though. I mean, it is. I mean, how dumb is it, though, that you get it? And then you're like trying to hypnotize someone like without them knowing, and then it just doesn't work, and then you're just like, uh, uh yeah, well, uh, I don't know, uh, okay, uh, I don't know what I was doing. You, did you didn't hear me say that. <laughs> you did not hear what I just said. Exactly. <laughs> this is all a dream. <laughs> move along, move along. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, anyways, but that's rough. Yeah, that know. is something. So, what what else you got for us? Okay, so. The other one I got, we're fast forwarding to what year is this? I didn't even I didn't even look up the year, but let me look up the year. It is November nineteen ninety four. So another twenty years in the future. <laughs> we have uh, Venom, Knights of Vengeance, part yes. four of four. And what's cool about this is nice Ron Lim cover cover. Yeah, it is. So yeah. I like Vengeance a lot. He looks dope in it. I, Venom's face looks a little weird. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, anyways, in the middle section of the book with the double spread, man, we got 
Marvel wants you to be Captain Universe in your own X-Men comic. How cool does that sound, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Really? Yeah, so um, the most powerful superhero in the galaxy, a power that can join with any entity, and now it's joining with you. Kind of sounds like the Phoenix Force. Yeah, it does. But they didn't want to give up the Phoenix Force from... So they're just like, all right, we're going to do this Captain Universe character, and uh, yeah. But what's cool about it is for fourteen ninety five, okay, you get your own personalized Captain Universe trading card with your name and stats, okay? Oh. And a personalized double-sided poster, all for the 15, and you get your own personal comic. So the comic is kind of like a Mad Libs style thing okay. where you give them like your personalized information, like first name, last name, hometown, and even name of a friend or a loved one who will take part in the adventure with you. Ooh. Yeah. And the um, cool thing about it is, is they actually have two different versions. You can get a female or a male one. <laughs> okay, so cool. they did double. And um, they're saying that it makes for the most marvelous presents and a must-have gift for comic fans. Marvelous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my god, that so, is pretty cool though. Fourteen ninety five. I like that. Yeah, and it's um, like I said, double sided poster, comic, trading card, and uh, yeah, I mean, the art doesn't look bad on it either. That's, that's the thing. It was done by the Brothers Hildenbrandt. Okay. Mm, featuring the talents of Bob Budiaski, Jim Craig, and Dan McConnell. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, Dan McConnell sounds familiar. Yeah. I don't know why. But yeah, orders postmarked by ten twenty one ninety four will arrive in time for Christmas. Mm. Now, what if we postmarked it today? When are we going to get it? <laughs> are we going to get it? Uh oh! For any questions about your order, you there's a number to call. You I could call try it? the number. I'll try. Do it. it. I'll Let's try do it. it. Let's on. do it. Let's Hold see on. if they answer this time. I don't know. It's a one eight hundred number, so I mean, who knows? But we'll uh, see. that's pretty cool. You know, double sided poster, the cards, the comics, all that together. That can that would be fun. That could be really fun. The only thing though is I see that double sided poster. It's like which side do you put up and you flip that every other month or every other week? <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, yep. All right, so I got the number in. Let's see. We're sorry, you're only allowed one entry per telephone number. Goodbye. I mean, what? <laughs> I don't even, I've never heard that before one in my life. One entry before telephone number. Are they saying that my number called and uh, entered this back in the day or something? <laughs> don't you remember doing that back in, uh, 90, what was it, 97 you said? 94. 94? I was a whole three years old, so yeah, totally. I totally had my cell phone back then. That's what it was. Your mom gave you the phone to play with, and you'd be like, dee, 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 post well. that. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, this is cool. Yeah. Um, they don't do things like this anymore, no, really. No. I mean, you also don't get like full page spread ads like this anymore no. in uh, Marvel books. So cool, and it has a little mail away and everything. But yeah, very dope. Um, so do you have. Any honorable mentions? I do have one honorable mention. As you can okay. see from the pick over here, we have got the most horrific ad that should have never been put in a comic book. This is just inappropriate on so many levels. You know, at first, of course, it's a Sergeant Fury uh, book, so I can see why maybe they would want to place it. But really, reproductive German helmet. As long as um, crosses on chains, uh, tight. Um, pins, late, uh, lapel pins, you know, the German World War II eagles with the swash stick in the claws. You can get a set of five decals for a dollar, six sets for five dollars with uh, the SS symbol or the uh, swash stick on the eagle again. You know, all of this Nazi paraphernalia that you can order away and buy out of Minneapolis. Okay, but here's the kicker the name of the company Adolf's. Oh my gosh. Someone dropped the ball letting these guys in the comics. So inappropriate on so many levels. So yeah. many levels. I mean, come on. Adolph's first. I mean, the, the ad itself in a, a Sergeant Fury comic where you're rooting for your hero killing the Nazis. Come on, Marvel. What were you thinking putting this, letting this ad slip by? 
Oh, it's cringy. Yeah. It's super cringy. It's like I don't even know what to say to that. You can get the little. The, I know that I, cause I saw the ad in the Warlock comic too. I saw the same one, and you can get the decals for your helmet and stuff, and it's just like. Mm. It says memorabilia, and it's yeah. just um, you know if it was like um, maybe if they worded it as like war trophy and the or thing something. Is they're all reproductions. Yeah, you know, that's basically saying yeah. I just want to advertise you know Hitler. Yeah, yeah it's just it's just not right. So Cringe. we'll move away from that. You know, what do you have for an honorable mention there? Okay, so my honorable mention is actually out of the um, the Venom book. And let me get to the page real fast. But it was for a cartoon that we all know and love. And at least I did. And uh, Greg Wiseman's a cool guy. Um, but Gargoyles. Gargoyles. Yeah. Yes. And this was apparently, before it came out, coming October 24th. Mm. Um, this, came, this comic came out in what? What did I say it was? It was 94. 94. But November. Okay. Okay. So this already came out. This is an old ad then. Yeah. Oh, anyways, mm-hmm. October, I guess it was coming out the same month or something, because, you know, they released usually a month. Yeah, you know how it works. Yeah. But, yeah, Gargoyles, I remember growing up watching it. I remember coming home from school and, like, going to Fox and be like, okay, cool, Gargoyles. Yeah. <laughs> but for those of you that don't know what Gargoyles is, check out our podcast, The Four Guys in a Comic, with a flashback episode with Greg Wiseman talking mm-hmm. about it. All right? Yeah, good stuff. It is really good stuff. Okay. All right, well... I guess that is going to conclude our episode of Pulling Ads for today. Thanks again for tuning in. Also, go back and check out all our old stuff. You know some of the stuff we're talking about. You may not know, but if you go back and watch the old episodes, you'll figure it out pretty quickly. You will. Yeah. And definitely, definitely, definitely get subscribed. Give us a like. Leave a comment. uh, And check us out on our social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. And we do a podcast every Saturday. So if you have a long drive, you want to listen to something, hear us talk to some people that work in the industry, check it out every Saturday. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, you name it. You could probably just Google four guys in a comic and you'll find everything. I have Googled it and you know what? You can't find everything. Exactly. (laughs) All right. So this has been Rusty Surfer here with the Red Skull and we will catch you next time.